Hunger Artist, 1924. Collected Stories of Franz Kafka. First Sorrow, a trapeze artist. This art practiced high in the vaulted domes of the great variety theaters is admittedly one of the most difficult humanity can achieve had so arranged his life that, as long as he kept walking in the same building, he never came down from his trapeze by night or day. At first, only from a desire to perfect his skill, but later, because custom was too strong for him. All his needs, very modest needs at that, were supplied by relays of attendants who watched from below and sent up and hold down again in specially constructed containers whatever he required. This way of living caused no particular inconvenience to the theoretical people, except that when other turns were on the stage, his being still up aloft, which could not be dissembled, proved somewhat distracting, as also the fact that, although at such times he mostly kept very still, he drew a stray glance here and there from the public. Yet the management overlooked this, because he was extraordinary and unique artist. And of course, they recognized that this mode of life was no mere prank, and that only in this way he could really keep himself in constant practice, and his art at the pitch of its perfection. Besides, it was quite helpful up there, and when in the warmer seasons of the year, the side windows all around the doom of the theater were thrown open and sun fresh air came pouring irresistibly in the dusky vault, it was even beautiful. True, his social life was somewhat limited, only sometimes a fellow acrobat swarmed up the ladder to him. And then they both sat on the trapeze, leaning left and right against the supporting ropes, and chatted of builders' workmen repairing the roof exchange of three words with him through an open window, or the firemen inspecting the emergency lighting on the top gallery, called over to him something that sounded respectful but could hardly be made out. Otherwise, Nothing disturbed his exclusion. Occasionally, perhaps, some of the other hands straying to the empty theater of an afternoon gazed thoughtfully up on the great height of the roof, almost beyond eyeshot, with the prepeace artist, unaware that he was being observed, practice his art arrested. The trapeze artist could have gone on living peacefully like that. Had it had been for the inevitable journeys from place to place, which she found extremely trying. Of course, his manager saw to it that his sufferings were not prolonged one moment more than necessary. For town travel, rising automobiles were used, which whirled him by night, if possible, or in the early hours of the morning, to the empty streets at Bagnac Street. Too slow all the same of the trapeze artist's impatience. For railway journeys, a whole compartment was reserved, in which the trapeze artist is possible, but which alternative to his usual way of living could pass the time up on the luggage rack in the next town under circuit. Long before he arrived, the trapeze was already slung up in the theatre and all the doors leading to the stage were flung wide open, all corridors kept free, yet the manager never knew a happy moment until the trapeze artist set his foot on the roof ladder and in a twinkling at long last, hang aloof on his trapeze. Despite so many journeys having been successfully arranged by the manager, each new one embarrassed him again. For the journeys, apart from everything else, got onto the nerves of the artists a great deal. Once when they were again traveling together, the trapeze artists lying on the luggage rack dreaming, the manager leaning back in the opposite window, seat reading a book, 
the trapeze artist addressed his companion in a low voice. The manager was immediately of attention. The trapeze artist, biting his lips, said that he must always in future have two trapezes for his performance instead of one. Two trapezes opposite each racing automobiles were used, which told him, by night, if possible, in the earliest hours of the morning, to the empty streets at backneck to speed, too slow all the same for the trapeze artist's impatience. For railway journeys, a well compartment was reserved, in which the trapeze artist, as a possible draw wretch alternative to his usual way of living, could pass a time map on the luggage rack and the next sound in their socket. Long before he arrived, the trapeze was already slung up in the theater, and all the doors leading to the stage were flung wide open. All corridors kept free, and the manager never knew a happy moment until the trapeze artist set his foot on the roof ladder, and in a twinkling, at long last, hang aloof on his trapeze. Despite of so many journeys having been successfully arranged by the manager, each new one embarrassed him again, for the journeys, apart from everything else, got on the nerves of the artists a great deal. Once when they were travelling together, the trapeze artists lying on the luggage truck dreaming, the manager leaning back in the opposite window seat, reading a book, the trapeze artist addressed his companion in a low voice. The manager was immediately all attention. The trapeze artist, butting his lips, said that he must always in the future have two trapezes for his future performance instead of one. Two trapezes opposite The manager at once acquired. The trapeze artist as if to show that the manager's consent counted for a little as his refusal, said that never again would he perform on only one trapeze, in no circumstances would ever. The very idea that it might happen at all seemed to make him shudder. The manager, watchfully feeling his way, once more emphasized his entire agreement Two trapezes were better than one. Besides, it would be an advantage to have a second bar. More variety would be introduced into the performance. At that, the trapeze artist suddenly burst into tears. Deeply distressed, the manager sprang to his feet and asked what was the matter. Then getting the answer, climbed up on the set and caressed him, cheek to cheek, so that his own face was beautiful by the trapeze artist's tears. Yet it took much questioning and soothing endearment until the trapeze artist sobbed. Only the one bar in one hand. How can I go on living? I made it somewhat easier for the manager. To comfort him, he promised the war from the very next station for a second trapeze to be installed in the first town in their circuit, reproached himself for having let the artist work so long on only one trapeze, and thanked and praised him warmly for having at last brought the mistake to his notice. And so, he succeeded in reassuring the trapeze artist little by little, and was able to go back to his corner, but he himself was far from reassured. With deep uneasiness, he kept glancing secretly at the trapeze artist over the top of his book. When such ideas began to torment him, would they ever quit leave him alone? Would they not rather increase in urgency? Would they not threaten his very existence, and indeed, the manager believed he could see, during the apparently peaceful sleep which had succeeded the fit of tears, 
The first furrows of care engraving themselves upon the trapeze are the smooth, childlike forehead. Translated by Willa and Edmund Moore.